Welcome everybody and thank you for allowing Betacom to participate in Security Tech Field Day. And I'm sure as you saw us on the agenda, a private wireless company, many of you are probably thinking Cisco, Juniper, Intel, Betacom. And uh, why is Betacom here, a wireless company to share security with you? Well, we're here because, because private wireless, as it's emerging today in the 5G world, is such an important part of, of, uh, of the evolution and digitization of many of our enterprises applications that we often find ourselves, most conversations we have always begin with a conversation around security. And especially in light of the recent breaches we've had throughout the country, whether it's Colonial or the wireless carriers, security and breach of security is always top of mind. So our goal today is to share with you a little bit about our background. So bear with me as I talk about a construction company for a slide or two, uh, but also to talk with you in great detail about how we build security into our overall solution. So a quick overview about who we are. So what is 5G as a service? 5G as a service today is the industry's first ever fully managed private wireless turnkey solution. Now, what does that mean? That means that, that we plan, we design, we install the network, and we stay behind and monitor it to enterprise grade SLAs 24 seven. And we'll get into a little bit about how that we do that in a moment. But what makes us so unique in this space is we're, we're really the only ones in the country to do it. We're, we're, each of the aspects of plan, design, install, and operate are fully owned and controlled by Betacom. And you'll understand here in a few moments because of our, of our history. We're leveraging today with a dedicated CBRS wireless spectrum. At the lifeblood behind any wireless operation of spectrum, the new availability of 150 megahertz last year has really opened the doors for a tremendous amount of innovation, especially as it relates to enterprise applications. We offer a complete full service offering, either wholly owned and monitored by us, or we even deliver a fully managed service. You can acquire 5G as a service, which is thus the name 5G as a service. We're delivering a full offering around 4G today. We have roadmaps. We're working with the ecosystem of partners to deliver upon 5G solutions as the ecosystem evolves and more devices, more of the ecosystem vendors become available. At the core of this, which we're gonna spend the bulk of today talking about is our security and services operations center, which is a, a fancy way of saying a really cool artificial intelligent knock that we run based uh, out of our headquarters area in the Bellevue, Washington area. It's very highly secure, leveraging AI tools. We had fully staffed with a team of experts. You're gonna hear from the leader of that group today. Um, and uh, it's designed really to deliver the highest level of security possible inside a private wireless organization. We deliver our solutions to enterprise grade level service level agreement. So most conversations I typically get into uh, with uh, large enterprises, lot, not a lot of concern around are we, what hardware, what software we're using. As a matter of fact, you'll hear more about it. We're agnostic to those. Um, they're really more concerned about, can you just deliver to me a service level agreement because we don't wanna have to hire one person to manage a wireless network. We wanna run our manufacturing facility. We wanna run our airport, or maybe we wanna run our, our, uh, our schools or municipalities, but they want someone like us to deliver that private wireless data network. And then ultimately enterprise owned and controlled, which means that enterprises are in complete ownership or in complete control of the network, how it gets deployed. All of the data stays in house, they're in total control of the data. And we'll talk about some of those aspects in a minute. And finally, our big marketing tagline, right? Owned by you, operated by us. So let's, let's kind of get into construction side a little bit. Just, just bear with me, we, I promise we'll get to technology. Is that Betacom is a 30 year old company and I often refer that we're, we're kind of a 30 year old gray haired startup. Meaning we've been a wireless infrastructure company providing those services, whether it's cell towers or DAS and small cells to the wireless carriers for the last 30 years. As a matter of fact, we've done over 800 projects in the last nine years alone, many of which include DAS solutions, whether it's, whether it's uh, stadiums or whether it's airports or hospitals, hotels, convention centers. As a matter of fact, on behalf of the wireless carriers, we built the DAS solutions out of the last two Super Bowl locations. So we have a really, really rich history, which we've come to learn is what one of our greatest values is entering into this space in planning, designing, 
in installing wireless networks. We uh, have a nationwide team, so we're, we're across the United States. We have operations on the East Coast, the West Coast, headquarters in the South. Um, so we have a national team of experts. We and kind of pivoted away from being this construction company around the end of 2019, where we brought on a whole new group of investors, an entire new leadership team took over the company. Uh, most of our investors are based in the Seattle area or, the, uh, or down here in the, in the Bay Area. Um, they've really asked that they remain anonymous, except for one I can tell you about. One of our new investors and board members is Braxton Carter, uh, former CFO of T-Mobile, as you may remember. We launched the service in May of 2021, and our investors were, were really bullish on not just the size of the market over the next two to three years, but they really wanted to be early entrance to it. And what we began to recognize is that our, our history rich in planning and designing and building and by adding the managed services piece to it, through our security and services operations center and the security behind it, it's been so influential with early customers and early entrance to the market. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about some of those use cases and some of our experiences here in a few moments. So what is somewhat of our value proposition as we reach into customers? You know, when private wireless, in an essence, we're finding that Wire, private wireless isn't a replacement to existing cellular technologies or Wi-Fi technologies. What it is, is it's an augmentation to that existing network. So we typically find that our customers reach out to us for one of two reasons. One, they wanna move mission critical business applications off of Wi-Fi. They're not getting the coverage, they're not getting the handoff, they're not getting the performance that they need. And most importantly, they're not getting the security that they need. Or they're looking for new innovation that Wi-Fi just couldn't support, or maybe because of a remote location, they're unable to get wireless coverage. And so we're able to provide a private data-driven wireless network. We don't provide voice, we're providing data application solutions. You know, wherever people have big physical vast needs with complexity, um, where they want a separate network to pinpoint on a specific problem or application. Um, and most importantly, when there's budgetation limits exist, one of the great things that, that our customers love about private wireless is that it's all unlimited usage, right? We talked earlier about Spectrum being the lifeblood uh, of wireless and the availability of 150 megahertz of clean Spectrum that our customers are able to leverage and have ownership over has played a huge, huge role, especially we'll talk in a moment around things like video applications, which can be very, very bandwidth intensive. So who benefits from these private 5G, 4G, 5G networks? Um, really it's, it's across the board with most of the, the verticals there today. We're particularly bullish we've, on, on, on airports and airlines, warehouses and manufacturing. We've spent a, over the last number of months, quite a bit of effort, not just doing marketing research, but, but actually focus groups and interviewing across all of these industries to identify who really are going to be the first movers and who has the real, the, the most near-term demand to begin to explore a, a private 5G networks or just to begin to explore innovation in general and how they can leverage private networks to do this. Um, but we're extremely bullish on these. I'm gonna go a little bit deeper dive here in a minute into airports and airlines and give you some example of just the, the depth and the breadth of the use cases and how airports and our airline customers are, are utilizing this today. So let's talk about our architecture a little bit. One of the, the I think one of the real values of a private wireless network built around CBRS is the simplicity with which the, the network can actually be deployed, designed and deployed. Now, when you're using CBRS, the radios are much more high powered, so they have vast coverage areas, meaning very, very, you know, you need basically fewer application or access points. But when you look at the simplicity of architecture, and I know that this slide might be a little over the top simplification, but it's really highlighted design to share with you a couple of things. One is that our network consists of the core to the RAN. And we're, we're device agnostic today, we're software agnostic today. There's so many great core vendors out there. There's so many great van, uh, RAN vendors out there today uh, that are entering in the marketplace that are really highlighting the importance of not just the 4G today, but really have great roadmaps to, to private uh, 
5G. You know, we like working with them because our vision is ultimately to deliver that 5G value through simple upgrades. We don't need to do truck rolls to do simple upgrades of the network. But the simplicity of this, this, uh, this uh, solution, if you notice, keeps everything inside the enterprise's organization. And so we'll get into great detail later about how we securitize not just all of these elements of this network, but it's really highlighted to share with you a couple of things. One is very simple. Two, for us, this is a very, very scalable network, which means that whether I'm working in a manufacturing environment and robotics is a priority, or maybe I'm working in an in a, uh, 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 airport environment and maybe security cameras or asset tracking is a high priority, the network itself fundamentally looks the same. And it gives our customers the ability to kind of create coverage within their enterprises with a scalpel, not a butter knife, where they can identify a specific application and for a very low cost, deliver that application that value, which is the augmentation to the other, to the other networks. And we'll, we'll go deeper with airports here in a minute and talk about our experiences there. Other thing to note, which we'll talk about more later, is that you'll notice that in order to access the, the Betacom network, um, all assets that access the network require a SIM card, a Betacom SIM card. So SIM authentication is required to be a part of our network. Again, we're going to spend more time talking about the security side of this later here in a moment. And of course, all of that then is monitored off-prem from our cloud-based service, security services and operations center based in Bellevue, Washington. Brian, I have a quick question for you. Um, um, you've mentioned private 5G. I just want to clarify, are you talking about using the CBRS bands that have been opened up for uh, consumer and uh, private use in the US? Or are you talking about using Open RAN? What, what kind of spectrum are you allocating for this particular use? Yeah, good question. So we're, we're using the CBRS spectrum, which represents 150 megahertz of spectrum made available between 3.55 and 3.7. Now, as you look at our, our roadmap, as we, as we look to improve our operational efficiency, as we look to improve upon our performance, um, we too are taking a look at Open RAN. We too are, are, are building our roadmap to incorporate future technologies, more software-based technologies. What I do find though, is our customers, when you really get down to talking about applications, we're not having those conversations with them. They're really more concerned about, well, how is it performing? I actually had one uh, large customer uh, say to me, I don't care what the devices are. I don't care what your software is. I just need you to deliver me performance-based metrics to an SLA. And that's all they wanted. They didn't want to lift a finger to manage the network. They wanted us to deliver that. So we internally, we, we very aggressively, and in our plans and our roadmap, we're looking at, at all new technologies around open RAN, all new technologies around software-driven networks. That's all part of our roadmap. Okay, and just to clarify, because CBRS is three separate licensed bands, you guys are operating in the most open band, correct? You're not operating in one of the ones that requires me to go out and get a license from the FCC? So the thing about the license with the FCC, and I don't want to go too deep on CBRS today, mm -hmm. is that all 150 megahertz are available to anyone. Now, just because someone might have bought one of the priority licenses in, uh, uh, in the lower 100 megahertz, all that means is that they have a priority where they've actually deployed an access point. So maybe you bought one that covers a county, but you don't have, you don't have the entire county what you have is only where you've actually deployed a radio, and that's where you get a priority in that area. And so we, we of course, support and run the spectrum management on behalf of them. We utilize some of the large spectrum management companies, whether it's uh, Google or Comscope or Federated Wireless, we work with them all. And we leverage them um, to, to provide the highest quality available spectrum. Now, depending upon your location, in particular, especially once you move indoors, what's the likelihood that a competitor is building a wireless access point inside your manufacturing facility? It's not going to happen. So what that really means is that in most of the locations we come across, not pending uh, a specific request from the government or from one of the, uh, one of the uh, incumbents in the space that is allowed to operate for a period of time, in some locations, as I'll talk about later, uh, as an example, an airport we're working at, they have access to the complete 150 megahertz to do what they want to do, unrestricted. I want to I want to talk with you now about one of the verticals that we have uh, we are really bullish on. We're really spending a lot of time and energy in, and that's airports and airlines. 
And one of the things we've discovered is that, that airports intrinsically are they're almost smart cities, really. I mean, you could have everything from cargo. You have, you, you have commercial, you have retail, you have security, you have parking, you have airport operations. Airports today are very, very concerned about the customer experience, not just from the time they arrive at the airport, they're actually concerned about them from the time they book that ticket all the way to the point when they got on an aircraft and leave the airport. There's a lot going on in an airport that affects that consumer experience. We're finding that airports are one of the verticals today that are investing the heaviest into this private wireless space. Uh, most of the major ones are all have an initiative to look at them. There's a number of them out there today that have RFPs on the street that are specific to the CBRS space. And where, where we found our value is that because we had built six airports in the past already on behalf of wireless carriers, it became a real natural fit for us to take as an extension of that work we'd done, add to it the monitored service that we deliver and deploy. And we discovered that that has a very, very high value in this vertical. So let's talk about some of those use cases. Uh, kind of beginning with the, the outside where the, the tarmac is, um, there is so much going on above and below the wing. Every airport's biggest priority is how can we turn an airplane quicker? And so if you consider at some airports, if I can turn all of my aircraft around 15 to 20% faster, well, that means they can get 15 to 20% more aircraft into that airport in and out. And so there's so much that happens above the wing and below the wing. And one of the airports we're working at today, uh, like most airports, runs most of that outdoor operation on Wi-Fi. And as you know, Wi-Fi, of course, not, not just talking about security and performance, but it's the same Wi-Fi network that everyone that's on the inside of the building is using. So when a plane comes into a terminal and they need to turn that plane quickly, which means we have to download telemetry data, well, at that moment, everybody that just landed is now jumping onto the Wi-Fi network at the airport. In addition to that, you have ground crews below, which are all using baggage handling, scanning. Many international flights come in, not just with people, but a tremendous amount of cargo. So cargo is involved as well. And they find that not only does Wi-Fi not have just the performance they need, but it also doesn't have the coverage. You know, especially in some of those bigger aircraft, you need coverage all the way to the tail of the aircraft. We found with our deployments at airport terminals and gates, we've been able to get five bars coverage. We've been able to provide maximum bandwidth. You know, we can provide up to 100 megabits bandwidth on a 20 megahertz solution, on a 40 megahertz solution. We can provide up to 200 megabits. Um, we're experiencing right now uh, latency uh, on 20 megahertz of, uh, of 20 milliseconds. We're actually getting that faster in our lab. And we know that, of course, once this becomes a full 5G solution, that we'll get the milliseconds down below one millisecond. I mean, it'll be, it'll be tremendous performance. But starting at the outside of the airport, we're recognizing that there's so many things happening on above the wing, below the wing, the concessionaires, the cleaning crew. Where is everybody? Where's all the ground assets? You know, are they in the wrong place? Do we know where they are? We can't find the baggage handling truck. Where is it? We've got to find that thing. All these things lead to just constant delays, and we've all been part of that, where, where we've been sitting on an aircraft that can't get to the terminal because they haven't turned one fast enough, or just uh, the challenges with lost luggage. And what, what we've learned is that that same Wi-Fi network that's running all of these outdoor operations is the same Wi-Fi network that when you have a layover for two hours, you're streaming Netflix on. And you can only imagine the performance challenges that airports have. But we're also discovering that security and video is very important too. It's very important to, to be able to have a security camera, especially pointing at runways that can identify in real time with no latency, the difference between a coyote running across or running around on a runway or a tumbleweed. And these are very important real world use cases um, that, uh, that, that video surveillance requires. Well, the bandwidth required to run that kind of just nonstop video, you know, uh, with, with the amount of latency required. <laughs> We find that our private wireless networks are, are support what they're trying to do with that. All the way to retail operations indoors, to employ communications, both indoors, the ground crew using over the top uh, voice applications outside and all the way to building operations. And so we've, we've discovered that there's no limit to the number of use cases. And I think that has a lot to do with why so many airports out there today have on the street as we speak, RFPs to take a look at private wireless using CBRS. And we're excited because we've been able to participate in a lot of those and then continue to participate. Uh, we really think there's a, a lot 
a lot of opportunity for us in this space. So let's go back to that simple diagram to kind of give you a real world example of, well, we talked about how easy it is to deploy this network and this, the ecosystem that supports CBRS, not just in the 4G, but also what's becoming 5G. There's a very rich ecosystem of partners that provide indoor and outdoor RAN. And the characteristics of a private wireless network run on CBRS are exactly those the same as, as a wire, any wireless network. All of the assets have to be some authenticated to be on the network, creating another layer of privacy to it. But you can also see that, that we're running both indoors and we can run outdoors from the same core network. It's a very simple, elegant solution. It's low cost for the end user. The devices themselves are really considerably smaller than what you'd expect when you think of cellular networks. As a matter of fact, uh, an indoor radio that uh, we use for, for indoor RAN is literally, it kind of looks like a large, uh, smoke detector, it's not that big, but the coverage is significant. You know, we've been, we've been getting in some of our warehouse tests where one indoor radio can cover the equivalent of anywhere from seven to 10 Wi-Fi access points and provide better coverage. So the coverage, the cost, the performance, our ability to create elegant designs around a simple scalable solution, because of, we're working with an airport and an outdoor solution, and they come to me tomorrow and said, you know what we'd really like to do? We'd like to put in biometric kiosks at the front when you first check in so that we can speed up your ability to check your bags, to get checked in quicker. We can deploy that literally within a matter of a week or two. We can have that solution ready because it's running on the same network. Or maybe it's something out in the parking garage where they want to start to deploy digital signs, but just the sheer cost of digging up concrete and dragging all that backhaul to all of these digital signs is extremely cost prohibitive we can very rapidly deploy a solution around private wireless and digital signage. And what's really, what's really been great about the ecosystem today is so many of the assets that are already in place today can be repurposed. As long as it's got an ethernet port in the back, we can pop in a simple gateway and I can turn any camera, I can turn any television, I can turn in any automatically guided vehicle in a warehouse or any robotic. I can turn that into a CBRS enabled private wireless device in, in, in a matter of days. And that we've discovered has become such a valuable proposition because ultimately the customer gets complete control of their own wireless network. Um, I understand it works like a network as a service, but with, um, with 5G. So when I look at all the devices at the gates, outdoors or in, in terminals, uh, do I understand it right that they need a SIM card slot? And the second question is, what network do you operate? Do you operate your own network? And what's about devices outside the United States? So today, let's start with the last question. I'll work backward. Today, CBRS is available only in the United States. There are a number of global initiatives underway to deploy in the same band, the same kind of shared spectrum amongst enterprises. There's, there's efforts underway in South America, over in, in Japan. There's efforts underway all throughout Europe. And there's mm -hmm. many trials taking place as we speak on these bands, trying to copy or look, look very similar to the way the US is running this, this new spectrum that's made available for innovation. When it comes to the actual assets, the actual assets run on our SIM card. It requires a SIM card to be on our network because we have a closed network, just like any mm -hmm. wireless network where you have to have a SIM card to get on any wireless network. Mm -hmm. That wireless network is our wireless network or we build it for you and we stay behind and manage it and mm -hmm. make sure it's running. So it truly is a 4G slash 5G wireless network. Mm -hmm. It's completely owned by the enterprise. It's their own personal private network, giving them all the benefits of that, which is they're able to control the budget, the cost. They get unlimited usage on any asset that's attached to it. So you can imagine in the case of video, you know, video is one of the largest users of broadband. And uh, just, just think about our own personal lives. You know, if we were all on data plans that uh, were usage monitored, how expensive video would get very, very quickly. It's no different in, a, in, a, in an enterprise environment. And so they completely own all of the network. They're able to, every, you can't get on that network again. I, I got to emphasize that because we will talk about it later. Without a SIM card to it, there's no way to access that. And what we're starting to see 
is there is a very, very robust ecosystem today of devices or gateways that can be used to repurpose existing assets to make them work on a CBRS network. And we're beginning to see that same amount of energy move towards all of the 5G assets on the same CBRS spectrum. And so we're, we're very excited that we know we're early. We know that we're looking at a two to three year ramp up to where 5G really takes off. But what we're excited is that we're seeing that a lot of our enterprise customers today, they wanna be first movers and they want a roadmap. That's why they like buying it as a service from us. But they can work with us and we will very simplistically without a truck roll, ramp them up into a 5G solution. Did that answer all your questions, Kirsten? Uh, almost, yeah. Okay. But the devices at the edge need to be um, wireless ready. They they have to be uh, they have to be a slot for the SIM card. Correct. That's correct. I, I cannot use an IP uh, TV camera who runs over the um, yeah traditional internet. Well, you can as long as it has an Ethernet port in the yeah. back. So, for example, there are no CBRS cameras today. All of the security cameras we're using today are all the existing infrastructure of of uh, cameras that are out there. But as long as they have an ethernet port in the back, we have a very small gateway that uh, mm -hmm. there's a number of vendors that make them. We, we have a couple we like that we use. It very simply plugs into the back of that camera and that device just instantly became a wirelessly enabled on a private wireless network camera. We've done the same thing too with robotics. We've done the same thing mm -hmm. with automatically guided vehicles. The ethernet port's the key. And two, when it comes to camera, which is really one of the exciting use cases now, because everybody is looking to do asset management through object recognition, which requires a tremendous amount of bandwidth that it requires a tremendous amount of localized cloud compute, you know, edge compute capability. A uh, number of our enterprises today um, are excited about that, but there are no camera vendors that are building CBRS enabled wireless cameras. We just plug our gateways into the back slot in the ethernet slot. Okay, thank you. Yeah, betcha. Good question, though. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that kind of that kind of wraps up this first segment about giving you a kind of visibility into why, what's a construction company and wireless company doing here today to talk about security. But you know what what we've come to learn working with one of our big partners is Microsoft, who we work with on Edge Compute. What we've come to learn is that it's difficult to really truly have innovation at the edge without wireless. And that somehow devices need to talk to that edge compute capability to those applications, which has required a tremendous amount of new innovation in this space. And again, paramount to success in this space, providing any kind of wireless solution is security. And so we're gonna spend the balance of the day uh, really spending some time with you getting into how do we securitize or how do we approach and securitize with all the existing great technology out there today? How do we use that and innovate that and adapt that to our environment?